All right. All right. No intro. Let just let's be honest with each other. You clicked on the video because of the name. I know you did. I know you did. I made the video because of the name, so I'm no better. But let's see if the bourbon can live up to the name as I review the Fighting Cock Kentucky Straight Bourbon. <laughs> Fighting Cock is a Kentucky Straight Bourbon from the Heaven Hill Distillery. Now, Heaven Hill is known for competing, and they're known for producing different bottles that are meant to compete with their competitors. Duh. But... Fighting Cock is no different. This was made to compete with the Wild Turkey 101, and that's why it has that really kind of awkward proof point of 103. I can't really think of any other whiskeys that have 103. I'm sure they're out there, but nothing comes to mind. Typically, it's, you know, a little bit more of a rounded number. In this case, they wanted to prove that they were just a little bit better than Wild Turkey, and that was the angle that they were going for. Their marketing campaign has won awards. Uh, apparently, people really like the aptly named Kickin' Chicken on the front and his badass little ankle spikes. But uh, either way, you know, their marketing team is, is kind of spot on. But one thing that I will say they, they really maybe made a mistake on is prior to 2015, they were listed as an age statement bourbon. They were six years aged. Being able to have that on the bottle was probably a bit of a boon. And because of that, because of them removing that, it may have faded a little bit more into obscurity. I could tell you that I've passed by this bottle more times than I can count because it looks low quality. You know, it's got the chicken on the front. It's funny. You know, you look at it, you're like, ha, it says cock on it. But it's no age statement. It's 18 and a half dollars. And I walked by it more times than I can count. It just doesn't have that kind of shelf appeal unless you're kind of just laughing or buying it on your way to a party or something like that. Whereas Wild Turkey 101 does have a more sophisticated, I suppose, labeling, which let's not pretend marketing doesn't matter, right? So anyway, let's talk a little bit more about the whiskey. So this is a 75% corn, 13% uh, rye, 12% malted barley mash bill. So very high corn, but also kind of a standard mash bill. And uh, I guess there's really nothing more to do than go into the nosing and the tasting. So, does have a screw top, which not a big deal. 1850, you know, that if you put a cork in there, you're gonna be paying $19. So, let's go ahead and give this a nose. As you can see, I've already gone through half this bottle. I've, uh, I, I'm actually gonna let this air out for a second while I talk. So I've had, uh, at the point of you watching this, I've actually done two live streams where I've drank this. On one of the live streams, it ended up kind of winning. I did like a bourbon bracket against a whole bunch of other bourbons that were under $25. The other live stream that I'm doing on Wednesday or did on Wednesday, I haven't filmed yet. So I don't know how it did. Hopefully it did well, but that's all gonna be blind. Anyway. Let's go ahead and give this a nose. One thing that is nice about the 103 in here and the fact that it does spend time in charred oak barrels is it does mellow it out. Now, if you were to inhale really deeply and it's your first drink of the night, you might get a little bit of the alcohol burn, but for the most part, it is pretty mellow. You're getting cinnamon to a lesser degree. I certainly wouldn't say this is like a fireball kind of thing, but this is cinnamon and it's vanilla and it's a little bit of oak. Chocolate. There's kind of a dusty, nutty note in there as well. And that's about it. But that's not terrible. I mean, think about it. This is a 18 and I keep going back to the fact that this thing is under $20. I have my expectations set pretty low, and my final verdict here will be based off the price and what I think you're getting for it, but I'll go into that in a little bit. So, let's go ahead and give it a taste. Cheers. Hmm. So, with the taste here, you could definitely tell this is a corn whiskey, right? Well, it's not a corn whiskey, but high corn in the mash bill. So what you're getting is a lot of sweetness, but the ABV does make an impression and it's not a tough ABV to drink. It's not the smoothest thing I've ever had in my life, of course, but I'm not expecting it to be. It is smoother than I'm expecting it to be, which does go a little ways towards making a quality product or drinking a quality product. Let's see what else. 
Uh, there's chocolatey, almost like a cocoa dust kind of thing going on. It's in that it is chocolate, but it's dry. Sometimes I'm going to put this back down because I'm going to attempt to describe this. If you take a bite of milk chocolate, it has um, almost like an oiliness to it. Let, let's think like some some cheaper milk chocolate, like a Hershey's bar. It has a little bit of an oiliness to it, which gives it the consistency that you expect. And it makes it moist is not the right word, but I hope you understand kind of what I'm getting at. The mixture of the tannins from the oak mixing together with the chocolate gives more of an impression of a drying chocolate flavor, which makes me think cocoa powder. So that's how I came to that note. Just sometimes it's nice to elaborate on that stuff. There's some banana, uh, similar to almost a Jack Daniels style banana. More in the Gentleman Jack than like the old number seven. And yeah, that's really it. It's sweet, it's chocolate, it's banana. And not really, I mean, I guess a little oaky uh, based off that cocoa description. The oak does not stand out on its own though. So, all right, let's talk about this. So this is the fighting cock. What does fighting cock do for me? Well, fighting cock presents an opportunity to buy a sub $20 pretty good bourbon at 103 proof that not only would mix well, but drinks well neat. This, I would, I would suggest this as a summertime bourbon. I think this would go well, and I wouldn't feel bad throwing an ice cube in here. I wouldn't feel like I'm ruining anything or, you know, necessarily diluting away the flavor of some amazing bourbon because you could buy another one of these, <laughs> you know? This is one that I consider, I was on the fence about giving this a stock it versus a buy it, and I'm going to land into buy it. I'm only just making that decision up right now. I don't think this is necessarily something that you're going to stock because in my mind, Wild Turkey 101 is still better. But it is cheaper and it is very good. I think this is one that you owe it to yourself to buy. If for no other reason, if you had the same misconceptions that I did when you saw it on the shelf, that this might not be a very good quality product just because it's clearly making just a dick joke. I think it would be worth your money to, to buy it. And if it's terrible, send the bottle over to me. <laughs> I wouldn't mind having an extra one. But that does it for this episode of the Whiskey Dictionary. I hope you've enjoyed the episode and thank you for drinking along with me. Cheers.